In part one, we got this up and running, got it all plumbed in, all set up and producing 250 watts. In this video, we're gonna chase those watts. We're gonna try and increase it. We're gonna fix some of the problems. One of which is we need to redo the connectors here because they're just popping off. They're not high pressure enough to hold, to hold the water that we've got here. We need to waterproof the base um, a bit better, seal the gaps around the bottom here so that it's not flooding every time we run it. This pipe here has a nice smooth run down this bit and it's functioning a lot better but this pipe here has a, a much steeper drop off it runs down here and i wonder if that's why there's an airlock being formed at the top so we've got to move that pipe from there to over there so it's a lot smoother run these air release pipes aren't functioning because the pressure's too high so i've got to fix for them and i want to block up some bits in the dam here because there's a bit too much leaking through the middle of it so we'll do that, we'll get the PSI gauge on the other line, we'll do a couple of other tweaks and we'll see how many more watts we can get. Okay, so I've gathered some more stones to put on top of that and I really don't want to be using concrete. That's the best way to make a dam or best from the perspective of how it performs but I don't, I don't want to get, get into that. What I, I did think though is I dug a load of clay from down by the river, lugged it up here and it's my plan to kind of wedge those in the holes um, in the dam. And the reason I want to do that is just so that the available flow is used up by the hydro rather than spilling underneath the dam. And then the extra water flows over the top. It just feels like that's a better way of controlling it rather than having all the water leaking at the bottom. And then the top of the intake doesn't get the water covering it as much. So that's my plan. I'm sure I'm going to have to re revisit it, but for now it should, um, should work a bit better than it has done.
was trying to think about what I could do for the the ceiling of the turbine and I can seal the outside fairly easily just with some silicon and that's what I had done but it was a little bit that was leaking and then I thought what's happening is there's a bit of a ledge in here because the turbine I didn't cut it exactly the same size because I didn't want to be I wanted something to sit on so I needed a little bit of a ledge so I thought about glazing putty because I can um, squish it into the edges here as you've seen me do and it sort of creates a bit of a fillet so that the water isn't just spraying at full pressure straight against the seam that I've then siliconed on the outside. So I, I don't know how it's going to go. I've been quite careful to make sure I get all the bits out because you don't want bits of putty flying around inside the turbine. Um, but I hope that plus a bit more silicon on the outside should seal that up. So this is our standpipe here. Um, it's about, it was longer than this before, but right now it's about two meters, um, two meters high. And the pressure was so much that it was just gushing out the top. I couldn't get it tall enough. And I didn't really want to start making it like three, four, five meters high because that's just too difficult to, um, to manage. So I came up with this idea. You can get air. So the purpose of this is to let air out, not water. So you want any air bubbles to come up to this bit and vent out. And I've got two per line, so four in total. Um, but I had a look on the internet and you can get some hydro specific ones, but they're 150 quid each and I was like, no, there's got to be a, got to be a better way of doing that. So I came up with this idea. It's got um, just one of the connectors that is off the top of there. I siliconed in a 40 millimeter waste, you've seen me make this, 40 millimeter waste trap, 15 millimeter tank connector. And then this is just a bottle valve, which is rated up to 10 bar, so it should be fine here. Um, and all it does is just is for closed heating systems. Let's the air out, um, but not the water. So maybe it worked, maybe it won't, but it was 10 quid for the whole thing. So times four, that's 40 quid versus, what's that, three, 600 pounds. So if it works, then that'll be a winner. So I'm gonna plumb that in. Hopefully we found a good solution. So it's been another day and another night's worth of Googling and I thought I'd just quickly check how long it takes for glazing putty to set. And in ideal conditions, which is dry and hot, right here it doesn't seem to be able to defreeze, it's always got frost on the ground, and it's soaking wet, it takes five to 15 days to set. So I was like, ah, oh, gonna have to redo that. So I've pulled the putty out and I've just put some sealer around the bottom, um, some better quality stuff than silicon, it's Sika sealer, um, to try and do the same task because I'm not waiting five to 15 days um, and it might not set ever here because it's so wet and so cold. Um, so I'm not waiting until the summer. So I've redone that and we have also put these better connectors on here. I'm never sure about PTFE tape. I've you know, plastic to plastic is supposed to be okay without it, but if I'm honest, I still find they drip. So I've just put some PTFE tape on there anyway. Um, and these, these should be fine for the pressure. I've also, if you see behind there, drilled some holes because in the event that it floods, I realize I've, I've tanked it pretty well here, which means it just fills up like a bowl. So if it does flood, I don't want it to, you know, keep filling and filling and filling. So I've drilled a couple of holes so that at least if, if say one of the pipes bursts or something leaks, at least it's not just going to fill up. It's got somewhere to drain. So I need to wait, wait for about a day for this sealer to set and tomorrow I think we'll turn it on. I 
I'm just sort of figuring this out as I go and this pipe just wouldn't fill. I, I relayed it three times all the way from the top to the bottom yesterday which is why this video is a little later coming out and it just wouldn't fill and I was sitting there in the evening thinking why? Why isn't it filling? And then I realised that there could be no air um, escaping up here. We had the vents halfway up but we were losing half the pressure and then when I, when I rerouted re the pipe I realised that the um, there was just nowhere for the air to get out so the whole line was locked so I decided to come out today and just add these extra vents to the very top and then wait for the pipes to fill and hopefully we should get an increased pressure or at least it working because it seems like we're going backwards at the minute. Turn it off so you can hear me. Um, I was hoping to have some more watts in this video, but it seems like we're about making the same as we did last time. But we have solved some problems in that now I can let it run continuously rather than turn it on and then having to worry about everything flooding and having to turn it off. So we've reconnected all the connectors. That's good. We've got a better pipe run. That's good. I've got the intakes um, solved with the air getting out. That's good. I've got to replace two connectors on that run. This run's actually good now. It's uh, running at 100 PSI, or at least when it's not running, it's 100 PSI. When we run it, it's 20, uh, 50 PSI. Now we've got problems on the other line because I haven't swapped those connectors over to different connectors up halfway up the line. So I'm going to have to do a third video, although it seems to be getting shorter as we do each video. So the next one will probably just be the final video with the last few watts that we might be able to squeeze out of this. So there we go. We've made some progress. I wish we'd made more, but if you like this kind of content, come join us in the next one. It'll be nice to see you there. We'll see you then.